You now get ready, keep your eyes peeled. Spring is here and that means a pesky predator has returned to the skies. Yes, that's right. Magpie swooping season is well and truly upon us. And here with everything you need to know to avoid being swooped by magpies is Dr. Gronia Cleary from Deakin University. Doc, good morning. Good morning to your band. Thanks for having me on. Now, listen, you need to be honest with everyone right now. You like magpies more than humans. I might just a little bit. See that? Oh. <laughs> what do you got? Dress. Do you yeah, like it? The tat, the Show dress. me the tattoo. Hold it up again. I want to see the tat. There we what? are. Oh, wow. Yes. Listen, uh, you, you claim that it's our fault, right? If we're being swooped, it's us that has the problem. Well, this is it. You know, we're so quick to blame the bird. You know, maybe it's you. Maybe you gave it a wrong look. Maybe you pissed it off without even realising it. <laughs> but I just, I just feel like we shouldn't demonise the magpie. The poor oh. magpie. It's usually a male. And the male is being this way. He's, he's giving out these warnings because you're coming too close to his nest. And on his nest is his missus. And his missus is sitting on some <laughs> eggs. And the male is just like, Oi, get out of me territory. Get out of the way. Me missus is here. So the best thing to do is give the magpie some space. And remember, magpies are incredibly intelligent. You know, so they often have the cut of you. And they'll know if you're a troublemaker or not. <laughs> and this is why kids get swooped so often. Because kids are usually the ones who will throw a stone at the magpie. Oh. Or, you know, will, will kind of go for the magpie. Hang on. So do Go hang on. on, hang on. You've got an innocent little little four-year-old cutie pie yeah. with a little pink bike with a little streamers <laughs> down the side, just innocently treadling along. Being attacked. And Doc, you're saying that they're antagonising this magpie, which has, you know, usually got this major barrier around its nest that lasts for kilometres. Come on, give the little cutie kids a break. <laughs> yes, but you've got to see it from the magpie's point of view. It might have had a bad experience with another little girl on a bicycle with the streamers. So can't see from the point remember. of view, though, because it's pecking your eyes out. It doesn't <laughs> pack your eyes out. This whooping is just a warning. <laughs> Jesus, over-dramatise people. The magpie is just giving you a warning. You, well, you reckon that we can actually listen out for something, right? To, to, yes. What do we need to listen out for? So usually when you're coming up and the male magpie, you know, is seeing you, it usually just gives a little call to get a warning. And usually we don't hear it because like we've what? got... How a... does it sound? Well, I can speak magpie, so it's kind of like, Oi, I'm watching you. <laughs> and then when you get a little bit too close, it's like, Oi, this is your warning, but in an Aussie accent. Obviously, I can't do an Aussie accent. And then when you keep coming close, that's the warning. The magpie's coming down going, Warning, red alert, red alert, get out of me bloody neighbourhood. <laughs> so, so, Doctor, if it gets to that point and it's swooping and it's coming towards you and you're pedalling as hard as you can on your bike, is there anything else we can do? And I, I also need to know those helmets with the funny sticky out things that yeah. people wear. The cable ties. Yeah, d does that have any... Do you just look like an idiot or does that actually help? Yes. See, yes, the thing yes. is, again, you're dealing with a very intelligent bird and it will learn quick enough that these cable ties you have sticking out of your helmet won't actually do much good. What you should do is get off your bike, dismount and walk slowly to you know, through the bird's territory oh. or avoid it completely. Because of urbanisation and because you know we're getting more urbanised, our habitat is encroaching on the magpie's habitat. So we need to share our space and we also need to give the magpie room to do what he needs to do. And this is, this is fair income, girls. The doc reckons if you have a conversation with the magpie, the magpie will get to know and love yep. you and yep. will then steer clear. Just explain to Georgie and Deb. <laughs> So, okay, so what we've found out is that people who feed magpies, people who mm. make a relationship with magpies, the magpies will recognise them and know that they're not a threat and know that this person shares that territory and we're all working together. So that's why, you know, a lot of magpies won't swoop once they know the people in the area and know they're not a threat. So the big thing is let the bird know you're not a threat. Have you ever been swooped? No! But the magpies love me. I am the magpie whisperer. <laughs> you would change your oh, tune mate. if you'd been swept. swept you are the best. No, you are the best. <laughs> and she's got a good message. Just say g'day to the magpies. Say Talk g'day. She's the, the magpie, magpie, the magpie whisperer you. with an Irish accent. We love you, Doc. It's the best. You, it's we the love best. you. Oh, good tips. We'll Great talk to you again soon, all right? 
Thank you for having me on. Love okay. the magpies. Uh, we <laughs> love you. We love you. We love you. <laughs> if you want to learn more about magpies, you can check out the doctor's book. It's called Your Backyard Birds. There it is. I can't wait to get a copy. Oh, it's terrific. Isn't Isn't great? Great? A Maggie whisperer. Embrace the Maggie. That's right. Say good day to your local Maggie people. <laughs>